Welcome back to Robert Lord, where I show you the ins and outs of graphic design as it pertains to t-shirts, logos, and GIF animations. And today, people, today, I'm going to show you how to use the pen tool. Now, this is something that I've been wanting to help you guys out with for a while. I have just got a lot of requests to teach you guys how to do this, so I'm going to go ahead and show you. So as you can see right now on my screen, I have these two shapes and this is kind of like the basics of the pen tool. So I'm gonna show you how to get these two shapes. I'm gonna show you exactly what to do with the pen tool to get these two shapes selected out. Now remember, the pen tool is like the pinnacle of selecting, all right? It's not gonna make you the best selector in the world, but if you can use the pen tool, you pretty much got selecting down. You pretty much got the basics of Photoshop down. The moment you start using the pen tool, you start noticing that you're a whole lot better in Photoshop. So I'm going to show you how to use this. Now on this first example right here, we're going to select out this square. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer. And then I'm going to zoom in just a little bit, all right? And that's a common practice. Like, you want to go ahead and zoom in when you're using the pen tool because you want to make sure that you're getting the most accurate cut. The thing is, because the pen tool is the most accurate cut, you have to make sure that you're getting the most accurate cut. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to get this square. So if you go to the pen tool and you click and hold, you notice that it brings up these options, okay? You really don't have to worry about any of these except for the first one. So you can always go to the pen tool or you can just hit P and it gives you the exact same thing. And then we're gonna plot our points. So we're gonna plot this one right here. Plot this one down here. So we're gonna hit this one right here. And we're gonna do this one here. And we're gonna close it up right here as you can see as we're hovering over this last point the pen tool turns into a circle and we can just click there and we have our selection it's not really selected yet but we're just outlining this with a path and then as you can see we can go around and just kind of make our audits and stuff like that so i definitely know that this right here we missed this point right here but everything else is almost accurate just going through it so and then of course if i wanted to go ahead and select this i would right click and then go down to make a selection. I don't want to feather this, so I'm gonna go ahead and put zero, and I'm gonna hit okay. And then you get this selection. We have the dancing ants and everything is ready to go. All I have to do is just hit G and then fill it whatever I want to, and I have a perfect selection. And that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna keep that one, but I want to show you another way of doing this, okay? If I hit command and quotation, it brings up these, I guess, the grids or whatnot. And then I can just plot my points right here at these grids. Okay, and because the grids are on, they're gonna snap. And then I can just, you know, do my audit by turning the grids off. And as you can see, perfect selection because the grids on, and I like that. Okay, so I can go ahead and just right click, make my selection. We'll go ahead and dump purple in this as well. And there we go. All right. Now, this last method that I'm going to show you is probably the preferred method. All right. And we only do this because maybe 95% of the time when we're using the pen tool, we're selecting stuff out of the photo. All right. And the edges aren't always sharp like this. As a matter of fact, they'll never be sharp. All right. They'll always have some type of blur on it. So what you would want to do is instead of trying to get the line or past the line you want to get inside of the line right now a good reference to do is to keep your rulers on and just kind of plot your points from there so as i can see at the top of this this ruler right here is on this line right here and then i can move it down and i can plot right here so holding shift and then clicking is going to give me that right there I can scroll down and do it again over here. So this is on the two. I want to keep it on that line right there. I'll move up just a little bit to get this right here. And I'll plot my point about right here. Okay. And then I'll do it again over here. So just kind of making sure that my rulers are lined up correctly. Do it again. I want to have my rulers lined up again on this last corner i'm gonna hold shift like i said and then click right here and then i'll bring it in like so all right so i'm gonna go ahead and right click and then make my selection no i don't want to feather this and then i'm gonna go ahead and fill this with purple true it's a whole lot smaller but you know what it's pretty accurate so 
that's just one way of doing it especially when it comes to squares now the second lesson that i have for you guys and you definitely should be trying to do this this is the best way to practice by the way is to make circles now you're not always going to want to make squares because you have to make curves at some point in time and just clicking on it and trying to make a circle like this it's just not going to happen so so the one thing that you want to do is make a curve and the best way to do this is to click make your first point and then plot your second point but when you go to plot that point make sure you click and hold and then drag it down and this right here is about right so i'm gonna go ahead and let this go and i want to show you guys something else so coming to this point right here once i click and i hold notice how i'm outside of my circle right here so i'm gonna go ahead and hit command z to go back now this right here is called a handle all right and you just can't click on it with a pen tool like you can but it's gonna make another point so what I recommend doing is holding alt. So when you hold alt, you notice that the pen tool turns into a selector and you could just click hold and just kind of move that up. Okay. This might work out right here. Now I'm gonna go back down and just kind of plot another point. Now, like I said, clicking and dragging will give me what I want as far as the curve go. And I think this looks good right here actually. And then I'm going to go ahead and top this off over here on this next side. When I hover over the original point, the pen tool turns into a circle and I can just kind of drag that out as well. So now let's move into a live demonstration and how I would do this live. So as you can see, I have this cup right here. I'm going to go ahead and command J and I'm going to go ahead and select this out. Now this uses a lot of just straight edges and curves as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this cup out and I'm gonna talk you through it, all right? So, so I'm gonna plot my first point right here. Now remember, because this is not a sharp edge, you wanna go ahead and plot inside of your picture, all right? So whatever you're trying to select out, just plot inside of, all right? So I'm gonna plot right here. And then there's also curves going on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of click and drag it out. I'm actually probably gonna start down here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and top this off here, keep going. And I wanna bring it up right here like this. And if I continue to go this way, by default, it's not gonna make this hard turn right here. Like if I click right here, as you can see, it's gonna wanna curve itself. All right, so let me hit Command Z. I want to go to this handle and I want to bring this handle down. So I'm going to hold up and then I'm going to click on this handle and drag it down like this. All right. Therefore, I can go ahead and make this transition. Now, this is a curve, so I have to concentrate more on curving than going in a straight line. And this is definitely more of a timely tool, but the results are worth it. So you definitely want to put some time into learning the pen tool. Like I said, that square and that circle is the best exercise to actually get this going. Now, a good common practice on actually getting this out is to not worry about the small points or whatnot, but actually take out large portions of the picture. So you want to go around and you want to take out a larger portion and just kind of use the alt key to kind of like bring those down. And you just kind of want to go around your picture like so to get what you need out of it. Now, in this instance, as you can see, the transition of this is starting to turn red. So to keep yourself inside of your cut, you want to stay inside of the white. Just avoid the chromatic aberration. You would want to kind of like fix this up if you're taking your own pictures, but sometimes this stuff is unfixable. So... I would just say, just kind of stay in the white, just stay inside of your selection, look for consistency, and just make your cut. Keep moving. Now I messed this up right here and I did that on purpose and I wanna fix this before I move forward. So I can hold command and just kind of scoot that up and then use the alt button to move this plot down, as you can see. Now the pen tool can get scary, like 
you're using it and you really don't know if you're doing a good job but i usually say because you're doing such a close cut to the edge like you're always going to be doing better than what you think you are so just stay consistent keep it moving if you feel like you're getting off you can always just go backwards okay we're coming back to the handle so we're just going to go ahead and make this point right here stretch it out and then hold alt to just kind of bring that handle back in and then i'm gonna go inside of here like this this is pretty much straight right here so i'm gonna go ahead and not use too many curves but as i get right here i want to go ahead and make sure that i'm inside here like this and then curve down this way Like I said, I want to stay inside of the chromatic aberration, so just make sure that I'm curving away from it and then slap it right there like that. So I'm going to zoom out, I'm going to look at this, I'm examining this, and I think I did a pretty good job. So now I'm going to show you guys a non-destructive way of doing this, all right? So you want to go ahead and right click, make a selection, and this is where the feathering comes back, all right? So I don't like to use too much feathering. I always try to do like maybe one or two. A lot of people might say no more than three, but I don't want this to be too feathered. So what I want to do is just go ahead and make this a 0.5 or points. The most that I would do is a 0.8. So I'm going to go ahead and do it 0.8, all right, and hit OK. Now the pen tool is good for non-destructive editing and the best way you can do that is using the layer mask okay so after we got this selected out I'm gonna go ahead and just use the mask okay so I hover over here to my layers panel and then go straight down and hit this mask tool right here and bring that up now because I have a background in you're not gonna see the selection out like it is so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the background off and there we go and now I can bring up something like a different color so I'm gonna bring in a solid color probably let's just do a pink real quick do a salmon color like this zoom out and we pretty much got our selection out good so i could put text behind here like you know joe right here like this is pretty much an easy way of selecting things out and keeping a non-destructive cut And just one more example of what we can do is I'm gonna go ahead and cut out this key real quick. Just another example of something that you can do just by keeping it really simple. You can just zoom all the way in, like I said, and just kind of go inside. Like I said, you don't wanna do anything on the edge because everything is blurry. So I'm gonna start my plot from right here. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and start going because I don't want this to be too much of a turn right here. I just wanna bring it down some, have some control with it. So holding alt, I brought that in like that. And then I can just go ahead and keep moving. Here's another one right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn to, actually I don't even have to use the alt button. Just plot my point and just keep it moving, okay? And I'll have these pictures in the description below so you guys can go download it. But it's from Pexels. Pexels is an amazing spot where you can get pretty much free pictures for Creative Commons. You know, like you don't have to pay for it. You don't have to give no attributions or anything like that. I like using them. This is where I get most of my pictures if I'm not taking them with my own cell phone or my own camera or anything like that. Pretty awesome spot. So coming back to this picture, we have this kind of a, a weird transition where this one goes curve out and then it curves kind of back in and it curves out again to go to a straight line. Uh, all you have to do is just go ahead and make your first curve like so, all right? I would like to go ahead and bring this handle in just a little bit more like this. I'm going to curve it in like this. And then following the actual picture, the little transition, I'm going to just go ahead and go forward like so. All right. You want to stay inside, like I said, and then you just move forward. So and sometimes these aren't always the best like judgment calls. Now, like you have to make a judgment call sometimes because this one's blending in with the background. You really don't know what the key shape is. So sometimes you have to make a judgment call. Now this here, I'm just gonna go ahead and stay in the darks. I, I see the lights and all that stuff. I wanna select this key out the best way I can. So I'm gonna stay within the darks and just continue going forward. Now here, I wanna go ahead and make that curve again. So click and drag it out, stay here, and then kind of move like this, like so. 
click and dragging kind of bring this in because that transition right here is hard it's a hard transition so i'm gonna go ahead and get that out the way now i could do some photo manipulation on this one and like i said that's another judgment call but i'm gonna go ahead and just go around this and just keep it in so kind of move it like this like so and then just go through it And it definitely the more that you do this the better you get like the pen tool is not hard now see like right here there's a judgment call i almost went down right here but actually i need to i need to continue going this way i almost went downward this way i need to go this way so i'm gonna just click and drag it out like this now this is another judgment call because it's not really there there's not much to be there so you as a designer needs to know what is actually there and just keep moving And now that we have the entire key selected out, I'm gonna go ahead and right click, make my selection. I do want it feathered at eight pixels. I'm at, well, 0.8 pixels and I'm gonna hit okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on a mask and then turn out the background and there we go. So there's a lot of points that I want to hammer into you guys on this one. Like you always wanna zoom in because that's the perfect way to get a good accurate cut, okay? And then with that being said, avoid chromatic aberration. Like you want to stay away from those blurred transitions that happen from the picture and the light and the background and all that stuff. You want to stay away from all that. Be mindful of the actual shape, okay? Sometimes you have to make a judgment call. Sometimes you're actually going the wrong way. And then a final point to be made. You want to work non-destructively with this. Like the pen tool is a non-destructive cut. To go along with that, you want to make layer masks to go along with that. The layer mask is in the layer panels at the bottom. But with that being said, you guys, I hope you guys learned a lot. And if you did, go ahead and give me a like. If you have any questions, leave that in the comment section below. I'll be sure to answer that. And if you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. I want to formally welcome you to my channel. With that being said, you guys, I want to go ahead and close that out. So stay amazing, stay creative, but above all else, stay awesome.